we're going to talk about this little component called a flame sensor, or some people call it a flame rod. We're going to talk about how this thing works, why it's there, how do we clean it, and how do we check it. Very important little part, and this was probably one of our biggest service calls in heating side, as this guy gets dirty. So let's first talk about where it is, how it works. So all it really is, is just a metal rod uh, surrounded by porcelain. It's very simple. These very rarely break. They usually the issue if they're breaking, somebody put too much pressure on it or somebody dropped it and it cracked the porcelain and allowed it to ground out. It's a very simple little component, just a simple rod. Now some of these are straight, some of these are curved, but this is our flame rod. So I have this really uh, beautiful art drawing here, but let me tell you what I'm trying to draw so you understand what I'm, you're actually looking at. So here we have our manifold, and this is my manifold. We got our spots here, the burners, in-shot burners here, and my heat exchanger would be on this side. The flame sensor is between the burners and the heat exchanger. So this is going to be our flame sensor, our flame rod. So when I'm drawing this, this is what I'm talking about. So it's a pretty simple little component, but what happens with this, there's only one wire going to it. Now every switch in HVAC and electrical has at least two wires to it, in and out. But the flame sensor has only one wire going to it for a very important reason. It's actually the flame itself is the switch. So when we ignite our burners, we have a flame coming out of our burners going across the flame sensor or the flame rod, and then it brushes up against this heat exchanger, uh, burning inside that heat exchanger. So what happens is the flame itself is conducting electricity. So the flames conduct electricity, allowing electricity to flow from the flame sensor to the metals. Now some people argue that it's going to the burner side, some people argue that it's grounding out to the heat exchanger side, some people say it's both. I, I really don't care as long as the unit is grounded, the burners are grounded, and the control board's grounded, it gets that signal back to the control board. And the control board's reading that signal. So it's really cool that the flame itself is actually conducting electricity. The flame itself is the switch. So I don't let my students call this a heat switch because you could technically get this so hot it would melt until the flame is touching this metal and the ground nothing's going to happen. The metal of flame itself is that switch. So let's go to a little bit more about how this flame sensor works. Let's now get into flame rectification. And rectification means we're taking it from two ways into one way. So we got to first take a look at electricity. So electricity, we have the sine wave where it's positive, negative, positive, negative, positive, etc. This is alternating current. Positive voltage, negative voltage, and here is our zero volts. What's happening though is when the flame conducts electricity, it doesn't conduct it very well. What's actually happening is it can only conduct electricity in one way. As all the electrons and all of the molecules are being burned one way, it receives it one way but not the other. So what we're going to actually do on flame rectification is erase our alternating current. So now if we see it's no longer an alternating current, which means positive or negative, it's now a DC current, but it's really it's not even a DC current, it's a pulsating DC current. So the control board is reading this pulsating DC current. And so that's how the control board knows that the flame is there. It's a very unique DC current. So that's I think that's absolutely awesome that it is able to go through all this technology to know, hey, we got this pulsating DC current coming back. So it's really, really cool. Now the flame also doesn't conduct electricity very well. What it's actually doing is a very small amount. So we reduced the amount of amperage. It's such a small amount of amps, we call it microamps. And this is one of the ways we're gonna look at checking the flame sensor. We're gonna check, we're gonna break this wire with our meter, and we're gonna check the micro, very small amperage flowing across this wire. So it's the flame itself conducting electricity, the flame itself is the switch. It's a pulsating DC current coming back into the control board. Now, another way to look at this, let's think if we had a wall and this wall was entirely rubber. And we took a shotgun and we shot a shotgun at all these tiny pebbles coming at this rubber wall. Now, all of the shotgun blast is coming from the nozzle of the barrel. So all of these BBs are shooting at that rubber wall. Now, these BBs hit that wall and they're gonna bounce back in every single direction how many of those BBs are actually going to come back to that gun? And it's going to be very few, if any at all. So that's another way you can think of this. This current is being blasted through, but because that flame doesn't have any way of receiving that current back to it, it takes it into a simple one way. But because there's no capacitors in there, it's a pulsating. So that is flame rectification. It's taking it from an AC current to a pulsating DC current that the control board reads. 
Now, as this fire is burning across this flame sensor, it gets built up. There's carbon built up, dust in the air, all of these things build up on this flame rod. So what we have to do from time to time is clean it. And this is something that's usually done every year. It's part of our maintenance. What we do is we pull this out, we take a Brillo pad or some kind of abrasive cloth like this, and we take and we just simply clean this up. We go back and forth, make it nice and shiny, get all that old carbon off of there, off of the old all the old dust out of there, make it nice and clean, and we're ready to put this back in. Now we want to make sure that we're not using sandpaper. It's very important that you don't use any kind of sandpaper. What's happening is that sandpaper has silica in it and it's going to gouge this flame rod. On top of that, it's going to leave some of that silica behind. Well, once we have a flame burning against that silica, it's going to make glass and that's going to make an improper coating on this and then we're not going to have good flame rectification. So don't use any kind of sandpaper. Some kind of an abrasive cloth like this works fantastic. Uh, the other thing that causes these things to get dirty you got to be thinking about combustion and combustion analysis. If you're having one of these get dirty all the time, do a combustion analysis. Make sure you're burning the right amount of fuel. Clock the gas meter. Make sure your input's right. Make sure your flame is burning well. The other thing that causes a lot of these to get dirty is contaminants around it. Think about uh, somebody choosing a whole lot of baby powder, for example, near the furnace. All of that is in the air around it, and that can cause this to get dirty faster. Uh, wood shops, uh, commercial buildings, there's all kinds of environmental issues that can cause this to get dirty. And what you do in that case, there's several solutions. You can do filtration, et cetera, et cetera. But if you're having an issue with one of these getting dirty, it's usually an environmental issue or how the flame's burning. Do a combustion analysis, rule that out. So next, we're going to go to a live unit. And we're going to show you how to check the micro, very small amperage coming to these flame sensors. So we're going to check flame sense, and we see our unit's already running, but we can still work with it. I'm just going to take and unplug this fitting from my flame sensor. And once they unplug this, notice how my flame shut off. So what I'm going to do is use my little alligator clip on my meter. If I take this alligator clip, I can clip it right where it plugged in to my flame sensor. Now the other side, this clip doesn't clip in there very well. Sometimes you can take your probes from your meter and you can slide it right in there and it holds, but I've had bad luck with it falling out. So a little trick I've learned is I take a fuse and I stick a fuse in there, it grabs one side, then I take my alligator clip and grab the other side of the fuse. You can also use this with a splitter or in any other kind of fitting, but it's just I always keep these fuses with me and it's a convenient way to hook it up to my meter. Now I'm going to take my meter and I want to turn it to microamps, which is UA. So here it's going to say UA, that little U stands for micro, A is for amps, and this is DC. So when our system goes back and fires up, we're going to show us how many micro amps are running through that flame sensor, through the flame to the ground of the unit to make a full connection. We want to make sure within the proper range for that to happen. So I have to wait for this system to go through a retry. Once it goes through a retry, we can get that number. So we're running 5 points, uh, 5.4, 5.5 microamps. Now these are microamps, very small amount of amperage. So for us to check that small amount of amperage, we have to actually break the wires. So the wires are going through our meter. It's such a small amount of amperage, we can't use the clamp of our clamp meter because it's not creating enough of a magnetic field for us to actually read those amps. So by having it go through our meter and setting our meter for microamps, we can see what that number is. And if we disconnect our wires, we see our microamps drop to zero, and also we lose our flames. We lose flame rectification. So what we can do is once we're done, it's important that we clean that flame sensor, and then we reattach this wire. We also want to check, make sure all the electrical connections on this unit are tight because the number one issue for electrical failure is loose electrical connections. If the electrical connection ain't tight, the electrical connection ain't right. 